G'day guys, it's Mark here from North Oz and in today's video we get to pick up the GE Patrol from the mechanics and I'm going to take it straight over to the tyre shop. So I'm not going to stuff around in today's video guys, I'm basically just going to bring it straight back home. I want to show you what the tyre and wheel setup is like because I'm sure you guys are so keen to see that just as I am. And then I'm going to give you a full detailed mechanical report. Let's get stuck into it. So I just picked up the patrol from the mechanic and I've just been over to the tire shop and the wheels look insane. But before I show you them guys, here is a quick cost update on what we're looking at for the wheels and tires. So as you can see, the total came out to $724 for the wheels. You can see they did a tire fitment, a wheel balance and also an alignment. And I can happily tell you that it has fixed the wobble. So let's check them out. This is what we're looking at here, guys. Working on that cause my mind is on an island Told my babies I'll be homeless so don't stay up so don't stay Breaks my heart to see them sad so I won't wait up Need it all, all that's mine I need it now I lost my patience the same week I lost my smile My baby pressed me said I'm acting like a child I took some meals can lie that really brought me down I'm so antisocial but I guess it's type selected Swear I make a change but for now I just can't help it you can see that we've got a set of 16 by 8 and they are by a company called PDW. So um, as you can see, I paid full price for them on there of $724. So these were not given or sponsorship or anything like that. And they are, of course, the uh, six lug pattern on there. And they are a negative 13 wheel. So the alignment on that and the fitment on that is very very good i'm so happy with that guys i mean it fills out the guards so nicely so let's take a little bit of a walk around now and i'll kind of show you how it sits on all of the angles because i am stoked with that right now so like i said these are a negative 13 offset and they are in this pattern called d holes so i really like the look of those they look unreal uh, definitely my favorite style of steel wheels and they are in fact a steel wheel so they are quite heavy a little bit heavy, not as heavy as i thought they would be but they are a little bit heavier than the factory alloys but let's take a little bit of a walk around now and i'll show you how it looks on all of the angles look at that looks insane and i am very happy to report that it has fixed the wobble hasn't fixed the crooked steering wheel unfortunately but that will have to be fixed another day but for now i'm just happy that we don't have that insane death wobble at the moment so as you can see here all balanced up all looking nice excellent fitment look at that no poke at all it does look like there's a bit of poke on camera but when you actually line it up we're looking pretty flush so there's a spare wheel on the back again showing off those facebook marketplace mickey thompson baja mtz's 150 dollars well spent in my opinion and they are just looking fantastic and definitely not as noisy on the road now feels a lot more solid on the road now which i'm very happy to report and for what's that 724 dollars plus 150 in facebook marketplace tires so 874 dollars you really cannot complain about the results so i'm pretty stoked on how that looks and really guys at the end of the day two inch lift and 33 inch tires with mud terrains makes a massive difference. And I can't wait to take these off-road and give them a good thrashing. And as you can see, we have put the worst of the Mickey Thompson MTZs on the back here, just obviously for safety. We put the brand new ones on the very front so you can see how deep the tread is here. And on the back, the tread isn't that deep. So that's okay. I'm pretty happy with how the front is at the moment. That should get the most wear. So we'll just keep wearing them down until they kind of match the rears as well, which I'm not too concerned about, but that's all good. And then once you know we get to a point where these are completely bald and they are illegal, we'll basically do a full swap of all the tires anyway. Again, probably looking at a budget option, whether it's a Facebook marketplace deal again, or we just have a look and see what the cheapest tire on the market is. We'll see what we think of what you guys actually want to see on this i'd be interested to know what sort of tire you would go with a facebook marketplace deal kind of like this again 
or would you go with the cheapest brand new tire that you can get? I'd be interested to know what you think about that. If you guys haven't seen part two of the series where I picked up two of these very nice MTZs in a 285-75-16 to match my other three that I had because it had very mismatched wheels. If you guys haven't seen that, I'll leave a link up in the corner for you to click on. Otherwise, you guys can just check out the playlist that I made as well and you can see the awesome deal I got on these. I was pretty stoked in that video and um, yeah, and they scrubbed up really nicely as well. Just goes to show you guys on budget builds, you can save yourself a lot of money by spending a little bit of time on Facebook Marketplace and those sorts of places and communities. And there are a lot of like-minded people that will give you a good deal and will help you out for the, uh, for the cause. So just make sure you guys you know, ask you. You won't get it if you don't ask. And this is a prime example of me picking up two Mickey Thompson MTZs, uh, basically for the price of one used one. So I was very stoked about that. And the guy who helped me out on that one on Facebook Marketplace didn't know anything about the YouTube channel at all. I just, you know, approached him just as a normal everyday car enthusiast. And there are people out there that would love to help out and be part of what you're doing because you're sharing in that same hobby so it's a good time and something that this car is teaching me is that there is a whole different range of people out there that are more than happy to give you a hand such as my neighbor who i'm very thankful for who has given me this awesome roof rack which i'll give you a little sneak peek of now and that will be going on once i've sorted out the paint which is in pretty ordinary shape so Hopefully we can get that fixed up soon as well. But overall, I'm loving how this thing's coming together. I've only had it for a few weeks now and it is already starting to take shape. Check engine light, yes, has come on a couple of times. I'll explain more about that when we do the mechanical report in the next clip. So let's cut to that now where I'll give you all the information you need to know about the full mechanical report on my very, very budget GU Patrol. Let's get stuck into that report now. Before we move on to the mechanics report, can I get you guys to do me a massive favor? Can I get you to click that subscribe button and also like the video? It helps me out in more ways than you can imagine. It's been great seeing all these new subscribers coming on board, checking out all our videos and also the new Nissan build. So thank you so much for subscribing. Now, if you guys are like me, you're gonna be very interested in this mechanics report and seeing exactly what $5,400 gets you in the 2001 Nissan Patrol market. So let's go through some of these items. Some of these aren't very serious. Some of them are a little bit more serious and we'll talk about them and what needs to be replaced like now and also in the future. So let's get stuck into that now. I did get the Patrol serviced at Midas and that's because I take all my used vehicles there. I find Kevin who owns the place, I find him very detailed. He always keeps me in the loop with whatever, any time I have to spend any money on the car, he always gives me a ring and lets me know what options I have. So that's something that I really appreciate about Midas in cans here. Some of the not so serious things like wipers, they got changed, it got a new accelerator grommet, and they also noticed that the intercooler has an oil weep around it as well, just like I explained to you guys and showed you guys on the initial walk around. So like you said in the comment section as well, guys, you said just uh, take it apart and run some kerosene through it and that will fix that up. So um, I don't think that's a very big issue at all. They did note here that the serpentine belt was cracked and that needs to be replaced shortly, um, probably in the next six months or so. So in the next service, I'd say. And there is also a suspected left-hand front axle seal leak. And there's a couple of leaks around the place that's kind of suspected, so uh, we'll get into that as well. But yeah, so that axle front left uh, appears to be leaking, and they also noticed that the wheel was wobbling. I pointed that out as well, but they noticed that on the test drive as well. Uh, but basically, they said that try change the rims and see if that fixes it. They suspect it's because of the mismatched wheel, and they were spot on. Um, that has fixed it, and the steering alignment still isn't right uh, and so I'm kind of driving down the road a little bit crooked maybe you guys can help me out what's the name of the part I think it's called a steering head or something like that it's a bar that runs in the front of the suspension and it aligns the steering wheel you can get an adjustable one with the bigger wheels and tires and with um, changes in suspension geometry so if you guys know the name of that um, piece of equipment that I need to buy uh, let me know I don't have any experience with that so if you could let me know that would be awesome. I think it's called a steering head or something like that. It's kind of like a big adjustable bar that you can adjust to um, fix up the alignment on the steering wheel. So if you guys know the name of that, 
please let me know down in the comments section. You guys have been so helpful with helping me out with parts. I'm very grateful for that. Thank you so much. Um, the transfer case has a weep as well. I noticed that under the vehicle, um, they are recommending a reinspection, but also um, maybe fixing it up a little bit as well. Maybe it needs to be reconditioned or something like that. Uh, the air conditioner is pretty much toast. It sounds like the evaporator is gone or on the way out. Um, it's not blowing any cold air at all. So that's kind of a lost cause. Don't know how much that's going to cost. Um, the quote at the top of their head was something like 1500 if it is the evaporator, but they have to do some more investigating into that. The catch can as well was leaking and they said that the catch can is entirely the problem. The car doesn't have an oil leak. It's just purely coming from the catch can. So um, that's something that they left that for me to do. So I can just go ahead and do that myself to fix that up because you can just buy catch cans. I'm just gonna get a similar sort of one from Autobahn for about 130. 30 bucks and we'll see if that does the job. Again, trying to keep everything pretty budget here too. And this is the big one that I wanna talk about, which is the engine codes that it threw. So the ECU fault codes that it threw, because I keep getting this check engine light popping up, which is actually very temperamental. Um, I've done about 80 Ks in the last couple of days so far, and it's been on and it's been off, and it's been on, it's been off, and so far today, it has been off. So it's pretty interesting. So these are the codes that it threw. And maybe you Nissan folks out there, they can help me out with some of these codes. So they are codes 00, so that's throttle sensor, 47, and that's RPM sensor, 43, accelerator sensor, and 72, injection pump. The guess is at this point is it's a suspected injector pump failure. Um, so that's kind of where we're at in terms of uh, why it's throwing these check engine lights. But the weird thing is guys that I've driven it on a number of longer duration trips and also some shorter duration. So anywhere between like five minutes to like 40 minutes and it hasn't really affected the check engine light. So I don't really know what it is. Sometimes it'll come on, sometimes it won't. So if you guys have any experience with something very similar, please again, let me know. I am enjoying um, hearing about all the ways that you've fixed the similar problems that I've had, and I'm sure someone's had a very similar problem as well. So some of the things that um, I wanted to make sure I covered, I got through everything. Uh, those codes, again, are a bit of a mystery to me. I just don't really know um, what to do about that. I mean, we I could take it to a diesel mechanic, Maybe they could have a look at it and see if they can fix it. Uh, but again, I don't really wanna be going out and spending all this money when the vehicle works. You know, I mean, I did pay five and a half grand for it. I'm not expecting it to be perfect. So, you know, what do you do? Do you take it in and, you know, spend 1,500, two grand on it to get something done to it? Or, you know, who knows, might only cost a few hundred bucks, but if it's still working, do you go out of your way to potentially not anyway? but try to clear those engine codes. Um, my opinion is I'm just gonna keep running it until something breaks and then fix it. Um, I'm not too concerned about the general health of the engine. It seems to be running fine. Transmission is changing very cleanly. Um, you know, it's very solid in between shifts. So I have no issues at all with that too. So at the moment, I'm just kind of at the point where I spent, and I'll tell you how much I spent here. I spent $464 and 10 cents. So we can add that over here uh, to the overall cost of the uh, of the build so far. And yeah, and so with the wheels and now the, um, now the service as well, this is where we are currently up to. So you can kind of see how much this is starting to cost, how much it's building up to. There are a couple of things that I need to buy as well for the vehicle. So I need to get that catch can as well. I need to fix up the paint too. Um, you know, there's a few things I still need to do on the vehicle that might be a little bit pricey. Um, but once I've got those basic things sorted, I'm hoping that the, uh, the mechanics, you know, the mechanical side of things will stay together while I do some trips and have a bit of fun with it and start taking it out on tracks. So I'm hoping that one, maybe two more of these budget build episodes will be going out over the next two weeks and then I'll be taking it on a trip or doing a day trip or doing something with it, testing out uh, basically the vehicle and seeing how it performs off-road and doing exactly what I said I'll do with it, which is buy it and basically um, fix it up and run it hard. 
that's the whole point. And hopefully, I, and you know, it sounds a bit silly, but hopefully I break something so I can learn how to fix it myself. Of course, I'm not gonna go out of my way to break something, that would be silly. Uh, but yeah, the idea is that if I do break something, I will learn how to fix it. So that's pretty much it. Um, like in terms of how I thought that was going to go, I thought that the conversation with the mechanic was gonna be a lot worse. The first thing that Kevin said when he uh, rang me up is he said, how much did you pay for it? And whenever someone asks you that, um, yeah, my heart sunk <laughs> to put it lightly. So I was a little bit concerned because I thought, oh, you know, he might just be telling me to take it to a wreckers and cut my losses. But it wasn't like that at all. Um, he was just kind of getting an idea for how much I've spent on it and how much I want to spend on it. I mean, of course, we go all out and change absolutely everything that needs to be done. But I think we just change things as they need to be changed. Um, there's not much point going out spending thousands of dollars um, at the one time. We could do that, but that's not what this build is about. The idea is that we're just changing things as, as we need to. So I hope that kind of comes across to you guys in the right way, um, that it's not being neglectful of the vehicle, but it's just managing the expectations that it is an old vehicle. There's always gonna be things that need to be repaired on it. What are things that I can do, or if you are in a similar situation yourself, what are things that you can do to just keep it running as well? And when do we need to call the professionals, such as when we get the check engine lights and trying to figure out all that stuff. But again, these are things that I'm trying to fix myself and live with myself. I've come from vehicles that uh, have either been very reliable and haven't thrown engine codes or have been on the opposite end of that and I've just sold them off straight away. So I'm kind of, uh, I don't really have much experience with managing an older vehicle that you know potentially could be reliable um, and that I'm hoping will be reliable, but managing that over a long period of time and keeping it running. So this isn't the type of build that I just want to build up within two weeks and sell it straight away. That's not the whole purpose. The point is I wanna try and learn to work on this vehicle and then um, and keep it going as well and, and have a lot of fun with it and share that content with you guys because I think it, it's going to bring some pretty interesting adventures in that patrol. And I have to say, guys, I am absolutely loving the stance of it at the moment. Like, it's a stance is probably more of a performance, uh, you know, term, I guess, for, you know, camber and stuff like that. But, I mean, I love the stance of the four-wheel drive. Like, then there's nothing quite like a two-inch lift with 33s. Um, and I think what well, was it, a negative 13 offset, something like that, and it just fills out the guards so nicely, and it's looking so tough on those new wheels, so I'm pretty stoked. So that's it, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, put them down in the comment section. If you would like to buy some merch that I have, some shirts, some hoodies, because it is starting to get cold now, um, I also have some stubby coolers on there too, and some stickers, so if you guys would like to support the channel and see some awesome stuff happening on here makes you go ahead and do that um but guys there is a lot of stuff happening on here i still have more parts coming in and some more um and it's even just some little things like car seat covers and that you know just doing some little things on the patrol just to make it nice overall so we still have lots of things coming up for the patrol lots of little things to do on it as well um missing you know uh fender guards and you know weird things like that that once I get that sorted, it's gonna be looking awesome. So um, yeah, so I think it's gonna end up being really nice. I, I love the patrol so far. It's it's an awesome, it's an absolute tank of a thing to drive around in. So I'm having a good time in it. So um, guys, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, I'm glad that we got those tires and new rims on finally. It's changed the look of the car. So I'm so stoked. I'm even happy about the fact that the car didn't cost me an absolute mint at the mechanics. So we'll end on that positive note. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys down in the comment section. See you there.